be our change. Positive, inspirational stories. More than 150 flags placed throughout Memorial Gardens to highlight all types of cancer. Every flag that we put out is a representation of somebody's life. It was once known as Pink the Park, raising awareness for breast cancer. But two years ago, it became Paint the Park Odessa, the different colors representing different kinds of cancer. I go back to a quote that uh, one of my professors said is, inspiration finds you when you're working. A Midland Piano Store is helping to keep a local college student's dream alive by letting her borrow one of their premier pianos. A little girl shouldn't have to go through that at all. A Midland girl is just five years old and fighting cancer. Despite their struggles, her family is keeping the faith. I've just always loved Whataburger. A Midland football player shows his love for Whataburger, and the burger chain is showing him some love back. Get ready to get inspired. Thank you so much for spending time with us on Monica Cantero. Topping our positive and inspirational show, we begin highlighting Paint the Park Odessa. Hear from the volunteers who work so hard to make a difference. It's a celebration to support cancer survivors. When you drive by to see all those flags waving, it just kind of takes your breath away. It's also a time to honor those who have lost their lives to cancer. What a ray of hope for them that, that they've survived one more year. It really is hope. It really is a, a bright spot in, in a dark journey. And these volunteers, all strong women of faith, have unique stories as to why they got involved. Paint the park, Odessa. And they can't the kick me out, you know. <laughs> I come on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, even when they don't want me to. That way it wouldn't have any cruises. A big personality and a big heart. The word cancer is scary. Penny Prophet has been volunteering with the nonprofit for 10 years. She's a three-time cancer survivor. I had breast cancer in 98, and in 2004 I had cervical and uterine cancer. It feels like uh, that you're here for such a time as this. Ann Ledbetter was by her husband's side through it all. He fought a brave battle, lung and throat cancer. You just feel like you're not in this journey alone, and that means a lot. Ronnie Hampton's story is a bit different. She had no connection to cancer when she started volunteering. A lady in her Sunday school class kept pushing her to do it. I just thought it would be so depressing, and truthfully, I started just so she'd shut up and leave me alone. <laughs> In the end, she's glad she got involved when her pastor's wife ended up getting cancer. It was a joy to be able to serve her, and then it just made it so much more personal to me. Here's a look at what those colors mean. For example, yellow is bladder cancer teal ovarian cancer, and light blue prostate cancer. Of course, pink is breast cancer. Fortunately, we do have such a giving community. This year, Paint the Park Odessa sold 169 flags to raise awareness. It all benefits Hope House Odessa, which offers a variety of services to those battling cancer, including a place where cancer patients can stay for free while getting treatment. We do the Transpecus area, we, do, we go down to Big Bend, um, Alpine Marfa area. We also have people come from New Mexico. It's not just breast cancer, it's colon cancer, it's brain cancer, it's liver cancer. There's also a virtual auction coming up that benefits Hope House Odessa. It's open October 20th and will last through October 25th. For more information, go to our website, yourbasin.com. All of us here at Fox 24 News are also passionate about giving back to our community. We also sponsored a flag 
These flags will remain up here at Memorial Gardens in Odessa until October 23rd. This has become an area of some amazing tributes in recent times. Back in August, Odessa's strong flags were placed at Memorial Gardens to remember the victims of the August 31st mass shooting, which happened last year. Seven people were murdered in that violent rampage and 25 others injured. Then in September, another incredible sight. 3,000 American flags were placed all throughout the popular Odessa Park to pay tribute to the victims of 9-11. A Midland Lee football player showing his appreciation for Whataburger and the burger chain is showing it back as well. Jonathan Rabe, a senior, painted a Whataburger-themed parking spot in the school's lot, so Whataburger surprised him, giving him free Whataburger for a year. I've just always loved Whataburger, and it's, it's my favorite fast food restaurant. It is a favorite for many folks in our state. Rabe says his favorite Whataburger item is the patty melt. One Midland family fighting an uphill battle. Sadly, their youngest daughter, is suffering from cancer. Marco Ramirez has their emotional story. A little girl shouldn't have to go through that at all. And I would, in a million, a million times, I would train my uh, my life to be in that position and not her. On August 14th, Mara Cortinas and her husband Javier received news no parents want to hear. Their five-year-old daughter Mia had been diagnosed with leukemia. It's, it's hard. It's a lot of it's a lot of crying. More some some days there's depression. Some days we're just trying to. You know, when we see her happy, that keeps us happy. Sometimes when we see her sad, that makes us sad and makes us, you know, hard to want to do anything. But Mia's diagnosis is not the only challenge they are facing. They now have to travel to Lubbock every week for treatment. Seeing their little girl suffer is heartbreaking. It's just that when she does the chemo and then we come back home, she just feels very tired and she wants to sleep all day. Um, she doesn't want to eat too much. She just wants yeah. to just mope around and just kind of just be left alone. So, Despite the long battle Mia will face, they say their daughter is remaining positive. She's always making us laugh and everything, <laughs> which keeps us more positive about her treatment she's always, and She's everything. always talking about being a princess. That's all she yeah. always wants to be. And while Mia is helping them smile along the way, they hope to overcome this challenge together. I know we're going to have ups and downs throughout the whole treatment, but we are trying to stay positive and um, we have faith, you know, that everything is going to be okay. Javier says he is making a documentary of his daughter's fight. He says he wants to give other parents who are going through this some hope. A Midland man is now 103 years young. A beautiful sign was placed outside to mark the birthday of Buzz Banks. The World War II veteran credits moderation and a good diet for as many years of life. He has some advice for younger generations. Have a goal. I think every young guy needs to have a goal, something to, to reach for. Some great advice, Mr. Banks says. His favorite part of living in Midland is the people. Medical Center Hospital given a prestigious award. The hospital was presented with the Stroke Gold Plus Quality Achievement Award. The American Heart Association gives out the award to hospitals with the best treatments for stroke patients. A family in Odessa got a whole lot bigger after welcoming quintuplets. According to ORMC, this is the first set of quintuplets in the West Texas region. Health officials say quintuplets are very rare. In fact, there is only a 1 in 60 million chance. One of the doctors who performed the delivery back in August says it was a very rewarding experience. You know, in the, especially in these COVID times, uh, with everything being shut down and uh, everything is not as relaxed as it was before, uh, we had so many hurdles, but uh, we did we did good, and uh, at the end, uh, the hard work has paid off, and uh, it's so much rewarding to the whole team. Congratulations to them. Health officials say all five babies are healthy. A sister here in the basin is taking her kindness to new levels. 
she's giving her brother the gift of second chances. Jiang Kim has their touching story. They said that it was a small kidney, but it was powerful, that it started working instantly. <laughs> For Abby Hernandez, it was a no-brainer, giving a small part of herself to her brother Oscar, who she says gave her everything. He's taught me everything as far as like sports and you know how to be that girly, tomboyish. <laughs> Oscar was diagnosed with nephrotic syndrome at just two years old, sending him down years of dialysis and a failed transplant. The whole family was tested, hoping to be a donor match, but their prayers weren't answered until their youngest, Abby. You hear about it, but then when it hits like your family, it hits home, you know, so I guess giving him that opportunity to be able to do those things that he couldn't do before uh, is is what really made like what really drove me to give him my kidney. The two siblings, six years apart in age, but in the era of six feet apart, they've never felt closer. The day after the transplant, he did FaceTime me and he was just like, "Well, I just want to thank you. Um, like, I just feel super blessed to have you as a sister." And he's like, "You cannot be replaced." We just had like a little moment, and it was very special because. Um, I feel like siblings don't really have moments like that. For Abby, she's simply glad it gives Oscar a second chance at life. But for those who know her best, it's yet another reminder of her selflessness. She has a heart that's clearly, obviously bigger, way bigger than her body and bigger than really probably than five people's because she just really genuinely cares. How amazing of a thing and how selfless. What a great story. Thanks, Gian, for that. Abby says they're back to bickering in true brother-sister fashion. It all stems from our West Texas roots and who we are. Two sisters from Odessa starting a designer handbag line. From traditional Mexican food to Mexican sweetbread, learn more about the culture as part of Hispanic Heritage Month. It was always more about the people that came in. After almost half a century in downtown Odessa, a business is closing its doors, but the owner has a bright future ahead. Our hope, you be inspired, be our change. Sisters from our area are starting a new business, and it's something a bit different for the Permian Basin. There was kind of a hole in the market that we found. It all stems from our West Texas roots and who we are. You could say it's a mix between West Texas and the bright lights of New York. We really got down to like, what's the most meaningful thing to us? It's where we come from. We build samples. Lisa Brazil lives in Odessa. Her business partner and sister, who's also from Odessa, now lives in New York. People kind of identify West Texas with just oil and gas, but there's such a big creative community here. Their creativity led them to develop a unique business idea, designer handbags, but with a West Texas flair. Everything's very contemporary, modern, it's eco-conscious, it's all American-made leather goods. One of them's very good at design and, you know, and the other one's real good at business. Working with other artisans. One of the things that all the winners have is they're all mentally tough. It's one reason Dr. Ryan Beckham says the sisters won $100,000 through the Odessa Business Challenge to help launch their new company. A lot of the contestants, they describe it as like Shark Tank for, you know, West Texas. Midland and Odessa, the area, is full of entrepreneurs. I mean, this is a very, very entrepreneurial area, you know, a part of the country. We really would like to blow it out to just be worldwide and show everybody what West Texas has to offer. We wish them the best of luck. The handbags also have a West Texas name to go along with it, simply called Permian. The hope is the line will come out in early 2021. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we're highlighting the Hispanic culture across the basin. 
Here's a peek inside a popular Mexican restaurant in Odessa. For 28 years, Trina Morales and her husband have owned and operated La Margarita. Morales says she loves serving people and always aims to give them the best experience. To me, I think it's, uh, it's beautiful be working with, the, uh, with people and you have to love people to, to be happy. At 73 years old, Morales says she has no plans of retiring anytime soon. La Fiesta Bakery in Odessa has been a staple for Mexican sweet bread for generations. Jesse Arredando's family has owned and operated it for 56 years. It all started back in 1964 when his grandfather opened up the bakery on East Ann Street in Odessa. I love hearing the stories of the people that come in and like, Man, I lived down the street and we used to walk over here when I was a little kid and all my grandpa, my grandparents used to bring me up here every day. We'd come on Sundays or so and, and buy this and buy that. And now they're bringing their kids, their grandkids, and, and it's, it's good to hear, you know. Adedando says in the future he may change how the bakery is set up, but one thing that will never change is his grandfather's recipes. A food truck in Midland aiming to serve the most authentic Mexican food. Jose Gomez opened Mexico on Wheels just this year. He started his business by selling tamales on Facebook. Then Gomez was able to save enough money to buy his own food truck. He serves around 300 people every week. What I enjoy the most is um, the reaction from my customers that they I do love the food. Gomez hopes Mexico on Wheels grows into a restaurant in the future. The Midland Hispanic Chamber working hard to help small businesses. Officials tell us it's the only chamber in our area that has a business incubation program. Those who want to open a business can bring their plan to the chamber and they will be walked through it all step by step. The chamber even offers free office space in Midland. The whole process of, of watching them start their business to the day they open it. It's open to everyone, not just Hispanic businesses. It's like she was trying to practice football and she all of her equipment she couldn't use because of COVID. A college student continues to work to fulfill her dream thanks to a Midland piano store. We've had girls in tears because they had a, a blanket to sleep with. And the Basin Dream Center giving some young women hope. Stay with us when BR Change continues. The owners of a piano store here in the Basin going above and beyond to help a student finish her senior year of college. They're the sounds of her future. A future almost shattered because of COVID-19. I was completely devastated when I had to leave my school. Azalea Rivas is a senior at UTPB, majoring in music education. As a senior, it's very important for me to have a, a real acoustic instrument to play on. It was really important that somebody help her, and we were happy we could do that. And they helped Rivas in a big way. Piano Works Gallery in Midland is graciously letting her borrow one of their premier pianos to keep up her skills. She was like out there with no equipment and there was no way for her to grow. It makes you realize maybe you are on the right path, you know, maybe you were chosen to to give this instrument to because you're on the right path and you're going to do great things. This UTPB student is already doing great things. She too gives back by giving lessons to students in her hometown of Kermit. It's very fulfilling. And, and my heart is full and blossoming for this young girl. Very happy for her and just really excited that she's gonna continue to grow. She is very talented and a lot of giving going on there. Rivas hopes to one day teach elementary. A West Texas staple back in business, Fiddlesticks Farms in Midland 
is known for being a family adventure where folks can also interact with farm animals. Recently, it opened its doors again to visitors for the fall season. Here at the farm, there's plenty of room for social distancing, so I, I doubt that you'll see many people wearing masks. There's also a seven acre pumpkin patch there, a spot where many people like to take pictures. A business owner here in the basin, optimistic about his future, even though he's ending a long legacy. Jim's Tall and Big Men first opened in August of 1973. David Simpson actually started working at the store at the young age of six, but Simpson is nearing retirement. He will close his doors one last time, October 31st. It's been almost a sense of identity. You know, I can remember being the uh, only only little kid in junior high who walked around with business cards in his pocket to give to teachers and, and other adults to come in to see my family business. David's next chapter includes giving back even more in our community. He's the incoming president of the United Way for 2021. A special home in Midland transforming the lives of young women who age out of foster care. It's called Basin Dream Center for Orphans and is a transitional living center. It helps women between the ages of 17 and 24. The mission to provide safe, secure housing options. Since starting in 2017, it's helped 28 young women. A mattress um, is really important and blankets. Um, we've had girls in tears because they had a blanket to sleep with. Um, one of our students only had a towel to sleep with. So it's, it's pretty impactful. This free program helps the young women for one to two years. The community is now able to help a local organization build homes for low-income families. Because of this pandemic, Habitat for Humanity was forced to turn away volunteers. Since then, they have still been at work building houses for families in need, but they tell us they heavily rely on volunteers. The folks that apply for our program uh, and are going to be buying these houses don't really have time to wait. And so we are still building with our employees and our regular construction staff. If you or your company might be interested in partnering with Habitat for Humanity, you can reach out to their main office. The volunteer that comes to the door and gives them a smile with their food that's probably the only face that they see in a day. Love letters to encourage our senior citizens. We're doing a fantastic job with our students of making sure to keep things positive. And a high school men's choir group wins a special award. That's when Be Our Change continues. The hard work of a men's choir group in our area paying off. The Varsity Men's Choir at Permian High School gained a lot of recognition. They beat out more than a hundred other choirs across the country to win the Mark of Excellence Music Project. There are a lot of negative things going on in our world. We're doing a fantastic job with our students of making sure to keep things positive. Here's something else interesting. The choir is made up of 21 football players. One Midland organization showing our senior citizens some love. Senior Life in Midland collected love letters. They teamed up with Meals on Wheels to make sure seniors in our community knew they hadn't been forgotten. It's just so important to let these seniors know that they are thought of and they're cared for and that somebody is out there thinking of them. United Way of Midland also found a way to help senior citizens. The nonprofit started the Senior Service Support Project in order to provide groceries, prescriptions, and other essential items for senior citizens who can't leave their home. They also provide rides through Uber for Midlanders who need to go to doctor's appointments. Lots of amazing and inspiring stories, and that's what we hope you take away. There are so many giving people here in the Basin. Be one of them, be our change.